Wireless LAN Professionals Podcast, Episode 196. Wireless LAN Professionals is a place to educate, inform, encourage, and entertain those involved in wireless LANs. This Wireless LAN Professionals Podcast is an audio manifestation of these goals. Our host is a wireless LAN veteran, consultant, designer, and teacher, Keith Parsons. And now, the podcast for wireless LAN professionals by wireless LAN professionals. One of the things you can do with Wi-Fi Explorer Pro is you can use columns. There are more than you, I mean, it's kind of like Wireshark, you can just add more columns. There's some nifty things at, uh, Devin Aiken had a, um, his adjuster course, and in the middle of it, Adrian's there, and Devin said, can you, uh, I'd like to go down into the details in a beacon, and then like right click and make it a column. And with, in a day, Adrian had it working. So uh, you should see in a new version the ability to even add more columns. So when you're in the pro product, go and look at the columns, there's tons of information you wanna ha might wanna look at there. Next, we have the ability to do all sorts of filters and sorts. Difference between filter and sort, fil keep, filter keeps it out, and so you might be on a site, I'll, I'll just, slam on records for a minute. A hotel that might have channel fly running and it has thousands, I just want to look at this channel. So you can filter and make the other stuff go away. There's a whole bunch of filter. Uh, this little graphic came from Adrian's site. It's how to use filters. But you can also then sort. And you can then sort to see, the, and it's really hard. You just double click on the column header and you can sort by that column. So between filter and sort, you can take lots of information and drill down just the little parts you want. You can also copy. You can copy anything. And now this is context sensitive, so depending on where you are, when you click on this, if you're on an AP, you get a certain set of things. If you're on a group, it has a different thing. You can copy BSSID, and if you do, you get the BSSID. If you copy vendor, you get the vendor name. And if you copy the name of the SSID, copy. You just right click copy and now you can go paste it someplace else. But if you do the bigger ones, the all fields or fields with names, you get the full set of data that's underneath there. It's very simple. You just click, copy, then you can go over into a document and paste it right out. Very easy to, to pull off. You can also export and save in a whole bunch of different things. So how much data that's in there, it will export out to a CSV and you can do anything you want with it. So the data that was collected by that is available to use in different formats as well. You can also use iOS. So have you ever wanted to say, I have my iPhone and I'd like to find out how it heard what was going on. So you go into the iPhone, there's a little iPhone app over there. Airport utility, you start scanning, there's a little button, you say save, you save the file, you copy it over to your Mac and you drop it, you, all you do is drag and drop it right onto Wi-Fi Explorer Pro and you get the data in the Wi-Fi Explorer Pro. The pretty pictures, all the sorting, the filtering, all those things. So though the airport utility collects the data, it doesn't have a really pretty interface, but you can use Wi-Fi Explorer Pro to pull that off. You can also, of course, use the WMPi two ways. If you take the WMPi and you plug it in directly via USB port, it shows up and it's the one down there that just says external adapter WMPi. That's all, it just shows up. Plug it in, shows up, you click on it, and now you're using the WMPi. I have my Mac with a three by three chipset, AC, and I'm using a two by two in the WMPi. So the local one is just, yes, it works. But the cool part is I can also set it up as a remote, and as long as I have its IP address, I can load it in Wi-Fi Explorer Pro and remotely have that same experience. Fantastic experience to use the tool that you're used to the interface and see something from far away. If you have a Metageek, either a 2.4 or a DBX, you plug it in and Adrian software automatically grabs it and plots the spectrum analysis on the screen as well as the data that's coming from the Wi-Fi chip. Both happen at the same time. This is a way, way cool one. We all collect PCAPs for all sorts of things and we can go into Wireshark or OmniPeak or any utility to figure it out. And sometimes if you're like in Peter's class and you have thousands or the one that Fernet had that had like 300,721 300, frame, you just grab that PCAP, drop it on Wi-Fi Explorer Pro and it processes all the data and gives you an answer. Now the answer it's giving you, it only is looking at the beacons just like Wi-Fi Explorer Pro does when you 
collecting data locally. But it's that same easy to use interface. You can even go hit advanced details and get down and see all the information. A very fast way to take what could be a difficult thing and come up with an easier answer. It does decode beacons. All of the beacons. This is a PCAP taking of a OFDMA frame. I just grabbed it and dropped it on here. I can take a PCAP and see things that even if Wi-Fi Explorer Pro can't with the Wi-Fi NIC do AX, I can decode AX because Adrian's protocol and analyzer does exactly what we need. So it's a very fast way just to do the things you're looking for. Now, there, there are at least three ways, active, passive, and directed. Active is when you're sending out a probe request, a probe response, and you also listen to beacons. He added a way to do a passive which says, I'm only going to listen to beacons, no probes. Now the reason he had to add this is because some vendors sometimes, though they shouldn't, sometimes their probe response doesn't match their beacon. And so when you're in active mode and you see something flapping, some piece of information, it's because the beacon said one thing and the, and the probe response said something different. If you want to see a very stable, non-flapping, you go to passive, but then you lost some other features. And the last one's directed, which means I'm trying to find a hidden network, but I have to know what it is. So if I put in, I want to go and hear this hidden network, it will then go and listen only to that one. And then, that was my top 10. We have to add with one more thing. I did get permission, in fact, I got requested to just end with this. Check out the whole video and find out what that last tip was by visiting wlampros.com slash 196. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Wireless LAN Professionals Podcast. The podcast for wireless LAN professionals by wireless LAN professionals. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Wireless LAN Pros for all the latest news and updates. And also connect directly with Keith on Twitter at Keith R. Parsons. Head over to www.wlandpros.com for this episode's show notes, as well as the latest in all things Wi-Fi.